Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Gabby. I'm the CEO of the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center and Senior Vice President for All Sciences and a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the Ohio State University College of Medicine. Proud to be one of the seven editors of the sixth edition of Obstetrics, Normal and Problem Pregnancies. I'm Dr. Jennifer Niebel. I'm professor of obstetrics and gynecology in the Division of Maternal Fetal Medicine at the University of Iowa College of Medicine in Iowa City, Iowa. <coughs> I'm Dr. Jolie Simpson. I'm the Senior Vice President for Research and Global Programs at the March of Dimes Foundation. Uh, I also am a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at uh, Florida International University in Miami, Florida, and also the Chair and Professor of Human and Molecular Genetics at that same institution. It's been a privilege and an honor for me to uh, be with this uh, since the onset of uh, through now six editions uh, and it, uh, as they say in the Olympics, uh, each edition is uh, bigger and better than the last, and I truly believe that. <laughs> well, genetics uh, is um, moved by leaps and bounds within the last decade. The genome was finally sequenced, uh, uh, albeit only partially, in 2002. And what's really happened since then is the technology that has allowed us to sequence the gene has become much more efficient, much more rapid, and far cheaper than what we had once envisioned. So the T21 test that uh, Dr. Nebel mentioned is pivotal because instead of having to do uh, a, an invasive procedure, chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis, we can now, with a high level of confidence, uh, take a sample of maternal blood, recover the DNA from the fetus that finds its way into the mother's circulation, and to make a diagnosis based upon that. So we can do that for a selective number of conditions now, and we can speculate and dream and expect reality to come true for a huge number of additional conditions. I think the content of our sixth edition reflects many of these. Uh, for example, uh, we've added a new chapter on the fetal origins of adult disease by Michael Ross and his colleagues. Uh, we now understand that a lot of what happens in utero determines the health, long-term outcomes for an individual later in life. We have an exciting chapter on maternal nutrition and obesity, such a challenge in our in our population and especially for uh, women who are considering or are pregnant. And now today uh, we're being paid not for how many procedures we do but for how well we do them and making sure we do the right procedure. So we have a great chapter by Bill Grobman and his colleagues on evidence-based practice, quality and safety. Well I've been particularly interested in medical drug use in pregnancy find myself talking to a lot of women who have medical illnesses, whether it be Crohn's disease or lupus, and reassuring them that they can stay on their immunosuppressant drugs and that a flare-up of the disease would be much worse for them than staying on the medicine they're on. And so many patients who have been told they should never get pregnant are having successful pregnancies. Well, this book, since it first started in 1986, has really been a labor of love. I think we'd all agree that it's probably among the most important um, contributions we've made to our field over the years. Uh, and what I value is that it's kept us together as friends over decades. Uh, in this book, and I think it's the best ever, we've really added a significant number of new illustrations and tables. We now highlight the most important statements in every chapter, so if you were to read those and look at the key points at the end of the chapter, you would uh, really understand most of what you need to know. What I love to see is a resident who has a presentation for a case conference go to the online version as a very powerful search engine, bring up the images, the tables, the key points that relate to that topic, and within a matter of minutes, they put together a presentation that in our day when we were residents would just have been impossible. And then they share that with their, their resident college and faculty, and they can do that just so easily. It's, it's a great resource.